Philip Hogg Abelson April 27, 1913 to August 1, 2004, was an American physicist, a scientific editor, and a science writer. Topic: Life. Abelson was born on April 27, 1913, in Tacoma, Washington. He attended Washington State University, where he received degrees in chemistry and physics, and the University of California, Berkeley, UC Berkeley where he earned his Ph.D. in nuclear physics. As a young physicist, he worked for Ernest Lawrence at the UC Berkeley. He was among the first American scientists to verify nuclear fission in an article submitted to the Physical Review in February 1939. From 1939 until 1941, he worked as an assistant physicist at the Carnegie Institution in Washington, D.C. It was while he was here that he worked on a substance that emitted beta rays and was produced by irradiation of uranium with neutrons. After he collaborated with the Nobel Prize laureate Luis Alvarez they isolated the material, and became the co-discoverer of neptunium on 8 June 1940 with Edwin Macmillan. Macmillan was awarded the Nobel Prize for this discovery among other elements. Abelson was a key contributor to the Manhattan Project during World War II, while working with the Naval Research Laboratory. Although he was not formally associated with the atom bomb project, the liquid thermal diffusion isotope separation technique that he invented at the Philadelphia Navy Yard was used in the S-50 plant in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and proved a critical step in creating the large amount of nuclear fuel required for building atomic bombs. After the war, he turned his attention under the guidance of Ross Gunn to applying nuclear power to naval propulsion. While not written at an engineering design level, he wrote the first physics report detailing how a nuclear reactor could be installed in a submarine, providing both propulsion and electrical power. His report anticipated the nuclear submarine's role as a missile platform. This concept was later supported by Admiral Hyman G. Rickover and others. Under Rickover, the concept became reality in the form of USS Nautilus, the world's first nuclear submarine. In 1946, he returned to work at the Carnegie Institution, which published his report Atomic Energy Submarine, in March of that year. From 1953 until 1971 he served as the director of the Carnegie Institution of Washington's Geophysical Laboratory, and as president from 1971 to 1978, and as a trustee from 1978 on. From 1962 to 1984 he was editor of Science, one of the most prestigious academic journals, and served as its acting executive officer in 1974, 1975 and 1984. From 1972 until 1974 he served as the president of the American Geophysical Union. Abelson was outspoken and well known for his opinions on science. In a 1964 editorial published in Science magazine, Abelson identified overspecialization in science as a form of bigotry. He outlined his view that the pressure towards specialization beginning in undergraduate study and intensifying in Ph.D. programs leads students to believe that their area of specialization is the most important, even to the extreme view that other intellectual pursuits are worthless. He reasoned that such overspecialization led to obsolescence of one's work, often through a focus on trivial aspects of a field, and that avoidance of such bigotry was essential to guiding the direction of one's work. In a 1965 article, he described his work in paleobiology and reported evidence of amino acids recovered from fossils hundreds of millions of years in age and fatty acids in rocks dating over a billion years old. He estimated that based on his experiments, alanine would be stable for billions of years. Perhaps his most famous work from this time period is an editorial entitled, Enough of Pessimism. Enough of Pessimism, It Only Leads to Paralysis and Decay. This became the title of a 100 essay collection. During the 1970s, he became interested in the problem of world energy supplies. Books on the topic include Energy for Tomorrow 1975, from a series of lectures at the University of Washington, and Energy II, Use Conservation and Supply. He pointed out the possibilities of mining the Athabascan tar sands, as well as oil shale in the Colorado Rockies. In addition, he urged conservation and a change of attitude towards public transit. After 1984, he remained associated with the magazine. Some have claimed him to be an early skeptic of the case for global warming on the basis of a lead editorial in the magazine dated March 31, 1990, in which he wrote, 
I f the global warming situation is analyzed applying the customary standards of scientific inquiry one must conclude that there has been more hype than solid fact." However, this contrasts what is said in a U.S. National Research Council, Energy and Environment report on which his name appears along with Thomas F. Malone over a decade earlier in 1977. What is important is not that there are differences in the models but that the span of agreement embraces a fourfold to eightfold increase in atmospheric carbon dioxide in the latter part of the 22nd century. Our best understanding of the relation between an increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and change in global temperature suggests a corresponding increase in average world temperature of more than 6 degrees Celsius, with polar temperature increases of as much as three times this figure. This would exceed by far the temperature fluctuations of the past several thousand years and would very likely, along the way, have a highly significant impact on global precipitation. Abilson died on August 1, 2004, from respiratory complications following a brief illness. He was married to Neva Abilson, a distinguished research physician who co-discovered the Rh blood factor test with L.K. Diamond. Their daughter, Ellen Abilson Chernyovsky, worked as an aviation researcher for the MITRE Corporation in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Awards and legacy Abilson received many distinguished awards, including the National Medal of Science in 1987, the National Science Foundation's Distinguished Achievement Award, the American Medical Association's Scientific Achievement Award, the Navy Distinguished Civilian Service Medal and the Waldo E. Smith Medal in 1988. In 1992 he was awarded the Public Welfare Medal, the National Academy of Sciences's highest honor. He was elected a Fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1958. The mineral abilsonite is named after Abilson in recognition of his contribution to organic geochemistry. The Philip and Neva Abilson Hall at Washington State University was named in his honor. Bibliography <inaudible> 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 The International Society of Regulatory Toxicology and Pharmacology International Achievement Award. Regulatory Toxicology and Pharmacology. 21 2, 325. 1995. doi 10.1006, rtph.1995.1046. PMID 7644722. Abilson, P. H. Need for Enhanced Nuclear Safeguards. Science. 263 5153, 1543. Bibcode, 1994 Sci. 263 a doi, 10.1126, Science.263.5153.1543. PMID 17744766. Abilson, P. H. Storage of Spent Nuclear Fuels in Nevada. Science. 239 4838, 333. Bibcode, 1988-SI.239-333-A. Doi 10.1126 science.239.4838.333 PMID 17836854 Abilson PH1982 Efforts to decrease nuclear tensions Science 218 4571 427 Bibcode 1982 sci Point two one eight four hundred twenty seven A Doi ten point one one two six science point two one eight point four five seven one point four two seven PMID seventeen million eight hundred eight thousand five hundred twenty seven Abilson PH nineteen seventy six Glamorous Nuclear Fusion Science one hundred ninety three four thousand two hundred fifty two hundred seventy nine Bibcode nineteen seventy six Sci Point one nine three two hundred seventy nine A Doi ten point one one two six science point one nine three point four two five zero point two seven nine PMID seventeen million seven hundred forty five thousand seven hundred thirteen 
Abilson, P. H. A Global Rush Toward Nuclear Energy. Science. 191 4230, 901. Bibcode, 1976 Psi. 1991 901A. doi, 10.1126, PMID 17792689. Abilson, P. H. Nuclear Power Rosy Optimism and Harsh Reality. Science, 161, 3837, 113. Bibcode, 1968 Psi. 0.161, 113A. Doi 10.1126 science.161.3837.113 PMID 17770587 Abilson PH1966 Factors favoring nuclear power Science 152 3723 703 Bibcode 1966 Psi 0.152703a doi 10.1126 science.152.3723.703 pmid 17797430 abilson ph1964 conventional versus nuclear power science 146 3645 719 doi 10.1126 science.146.3645.719 pmid 17729992 topic see also nuclear marine propulsion submarine launched ballistic missile topic Notes Topic References Kennedy, D. two thousand four. In memoriam. Philip Hogg Abilson, nineteen thirteen to two thousand four. Science. Three hundred five five thousand six hundred eighty five seven hundred sixty five. Doi ten point one one two six science point three zero five point five six eight five point seven six five PMID fifteen million two hundred ninety seven thousand six hundred forty Topic Further reading Gibbons, J. H. two thousand five Philip Hogg Abilson Physics Today fifty eight four eighty two eighty one Bibcode 2005PHT 58D 80G DOI 10.1063/1.1955495 Topic External links 2002 video interview with Philip Abilson by Cynthia C Kelly Voices of the Manhattan Project 1965 audio interview with Philip Abilson by Stefan Gruff Voices of the Manhattan Project History of the UNFCCC, demonstrating that in 1977 Abilson believed in a CO2 climate link Encyclopædia Britannica, Philip Abilson annotated bibliography for Philip Abilson from the ALSOS Digital Library for Nuclear Issues Cleavage of the Uranium Nucleus, Physical Review, received February 3, 1939 Oral History Interview Transcript with Philip Abilson 19, the 26th of June and the 3rd of July 2002, American Institute of Physics, Niels Bohr Library and Archives.